Hello, my name is Harold. This is Tech on Tech, and today we're going to talk about the Bitax Gamma 601 Bitcoin Miner. Uh, this is a Bitcoin miner. It uses the BM1370 ASIC chip. It'll do about 1 to 1.2 terahashes a second, uh, consuming about 18 watts of power. Uh, there isn't too much to this. It's got a display on the top. It's got a couple of buttons over here on the side next to the fan, which we're going to use here in just a second to reset the device. Uh, for the shoot, we actually went to program it, set it up, test it, and it, it does. It works absolutely as advertised. We're getting about 1 to 1.2 terahashes most intervals. Uh, However, when we attempted to reset this back to factory settings, we did the initial check on it and uh, we assumed it was just uh, press the reset button or hold down the reset button here and reset back to factory settings. But we found that that actually did not work. So we're going to proceed to the backup method for resetting one of these, which is just to flash it directly from the website. So to perform that, we're actually going to hold down the power button. We're going to unplug the power cable, or you can just pull the power on it. Then we're going to reinsert the power cable. Uh, we should get a blank screen, which does appear to be the case. So we'll go ahead and release that button. Let's switch over to the laptop here. Now we already have a USB K or USB C data cable connected to the device itself. It has to be a data cable. It can't just be a USB C charging cable. Otherwise, it'll never detect it. So we're going to click connect. We're going to select USB JTAG and connect. We're going to select the gamma and then 601. And then we'll grab the latest version of the firmware. And then we're going to go ahead and start the flashing process. Now, while I'm doing that, uh, looks like I don't have this set up, but let me see if I can just add this real quick. Go ahead and jump over here at time of filming uh, the Bitax. Close that. The Bitax Gamma. 601 is going for about $128, maybe a little bit less if you can find a used one. Um, I paid $129.99 for it. Um, I actually do want to add that uh, it came with the manual and a copper coin. The copper coin is actually a one ounce piece of copper which by today's value and estimate is approximately worth three to four dollars so that's kind of interesting don't throw away the copper coin it's actually worth money now if we go back over here it says flashing is completed successfully device has been restarted now let's take a look at the device itself i am not seeing anything on the screen so let's perform a reset on it just kind of power cycle it on and off what it should do is, is after the restart, it should perform a self-test. We should then see a message saying that it's okay to reset the device. So we're going to let it perform the self-test, and then we'll move to the next step of uh, resetting it. Anyway, uh, the manual was mostly straightforward. We ran into a slight problem with, uh, let's see, it says press reset button to reset. So we're going to press the reset button over here on the left side to reset it so that will initiate the reset in fact i want to go ahead and show you those buttons over here on the left side that is reset on the top and boot on the bottom the boot on the bottom is the one we use to perform the factory reset on it the reset on the top we thought would perform a factory reset but instead it just resets the device so that's pretty much it anyhow once we get to this point we are at the factory point uh, for the device. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here to the laptop and we're going to connect to that wireless network. So let's go ahead and find it here. So BitAx 172D, we're going to go ahead and connect. Give that a second to connect to the device. Now it says open browser and connect. 
Uh, it brought it up automatically this time. I think we ran into a problem previously where it didn't do this, so I'm just going to show you guys this in case you run into the problem. Uh, if you run into a problem where it doesn't bring it up or it doesn't automatically connect to it and open it inside of a window, uh, what you can do is you can go open CMD. There we go. Just CMD. Pull this up. Pull up IP config, which is uh, the command that I just ran, and you can type in 192.168.4.1 into the browser here and go directly to the device just in case you end up with a scenario where it did not automatically go to the configuration. Now, in our case, it did, but if it didn't, you'd be able to use that to bypass it and go here. So, now we have the host name. Now, the device needs to connect to Wi-Fi. So, we're going to do a search here and connect to the Wi-Fi network that we have available. We're going to go ahead and enter the password for the Wi-Fi network that we have available. Okay, enter. We're gonna go ahead and save that. Uh, you must restart the device, that's totally okay. We'll go ahead and initiate a restart. Now, let's jump back over here to the device itself. It is rebooting, which looks pretty good. Sorry, let me put that up a little bit here. We should see it pull an IP address, which it did. So what we're going to do now is you see the IP address, 192.168.12.86. That's going to be the IP address we're going to use to access the device to input the settings that we're going to input. So we're going to go back over here. Now, since we're, let's see if it, it did. Now, my laptop reconnected to my home wireless network make sure that it does since now that the device is connected to your home wireless network you want to be connected to your home wireless network once that's confirmed let's go to the device itself which is 192.168.12.86 and then enter all righty now, there's a few things we have on here. Uh, a bunch of this stuff isn't really set up yet. And since we just started from defaults, there isn't going to be a whole of really good information in here. So let's just skip a bunch of this stuff for now. And let's go ahead and input our pool settings. Um, I am currently using the brains pool for my stuff. But, you know, you can use whoever you want to. Uh, make sure that when you input it, uh, you don't have to do HTTP colon or HTTPS colon slash slash. Uh, you're just going to do stratum.brains.com or stratum plus TCP at whatever. You don't have to do the HTTPS part of it. Uh, we're going to need the username. So we're going to input the username here. So we're going to fix that. Looks like some of these settings were pre-implemented so that when you power it up, it'll just uh, mine for this uh, this address here. But that's okay. We're going to put ours in. One, two, three. So these are set up so you don't actually have to uh, suggest a difficulty. Enable external. So we're actually going to leave that off. Let's go ahead and program that in, and then we'll initiate a restart. Let's take a look at the device itself. It is restarting and connecting. And we'll give it a second just to complete its connection and show us that it's mining there. Yep, it has an IP address. It is connecting to Stratum Host. Looks like it's connecting and we're online. Now, I'll have to check and see if it's actually, uh, I'll have to see if I can find that. So we're going to go brains pool, brains pool. Oh, it's not showing it. Oh, that's right, because it's on the other one. Hold on, let me switch to this one. Okay. B-R-A-I-N-S dot com. We're going to go pool. We're going to go login. You can ignore the uh, login part of that. 
and then right now it does show that we have two workers now because i reconnected it there's uh there's going to be some discre there's going to be a discrepancy for a little while while the miner connects and syncs with the network and does all that stuff uh this is the hashing that i've done on this device for the or up and up until the point where i disconnected it reprogrammed it it's it's been it's been pretty consistent although i should know i run two of these which is why i'm usually over two to 2.6 in fact i'm doing an entire one of these on solar power which is kind of interesting and i haven't mined a whole lot on this but i can tell you that it performs exactly as designed and it works exactly the way you would expect it to uh, i will note that i'm generating about six cents a day sometimes a little bit more i haven't i haven't generated too much since i did this but even pennies add up over time so i will say that this has been pretty effective it's done everything i expected it to um, i hopefully will in the future get a chance to try some bigger more powerful hardware that's um that's a little more uh a little more consuming than this is but that said i was happy to walk you through all of this if you have any questions post it in the comments below uh i have more videos coming about a bunch of different stuff so stick around summer entertainment summer how-to videos i'll make sure i don't push the how-to videos out to all of you guys um with that we uh hope you learned a little bit we hope this was educational for you have a great rest of the day and thank you for stopping in